Order! 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 The word repeated in Britain's Parliament seems totally absent from Brexit negotiations. With the March 29th deadline looming, Prime Minister Theresa May is working with European Union leaders to hammer out a deal for how Britain should leave the EU. If you're confused, you're definitely not alone. To be quite honest, looking at things right now, I haven't got the foggiest idea. To help you keep up with the debate, here are some key terms about the Brexit negotiations you need to understand. First, let's look at the term Irish backstop. Both the EU and Britain promised that after Brexit, the border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland would be seamless, not standing in the way of trade or travel, just like it is today. The Republic of Ireland in the south is part of the European Union and Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. For decades, sectarian violence raged in Northern Ireland. Around 3,600 people were killed over three decades until the Good Friday Agreement in 1998. With hostilities ended, watchtowers and armed guards disappeared from the border. How would Britain's exit from the EU change this? Well, it's still not clear how each bloc will treat travellers using passports from the other. There's also the big problem of trade. The Irish backstop is essentially an entrance plan for Northern Ireland that requires Britain to follow EU trade rules and regulations without giving the UK any say in them, unless it can come up with a free trade deal or design some new technology that could take the place of border stops. This brings us to our next terms, the customs union and the single market. In order to be part of the EU, member states agree to common standards for goods. That means no need for quality inspections at the borders and no tariffs on trade. By leaving the EU, that changes for the United Kingdom, including theoretically Northern Ireland. The only Brexit deal that has been voted on so far in British Parliament requires Britain to stay in a common customs union until 2021. But after that transition period, it isn't clear what will happen. And that's when things could get tricky at the Irish border. If people and goods are allowed to flow freely like they are now, they would have to be checked somewhere else. What would that mean for Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom? Awkwardness over trade for certain. Perhaps another sort of border in the Irish Sea. And certainly a weakening of ties. On the other end of the spectrum, Brexiteers are worried Britain might end up trapped in a customs union permanently, which would stop them from striking new trade deals with other countries like the US. That was one of the main reasons they wanted Brexit in the first place. It would also force Britain to observe all the EU's regulations with no representation in the body that makes those rules. There are no easy answers here, and the UK is cutting it short on time. Britain is set to leave March 29th, but there is a way to push that date back. This brings us to our last term, Article 50. It's part of the amendment to the treaty that governs the EU. Article 50 says a country has two years after it says it's leaving to hammer out a deal with the European Commission for its new relationship. Theresa May sent a letter on March 29, 2017, stating Britain's intention to leave, setting off the countdown clock. European Parliament and heads of state have to OK the deal. If it looks like they can't come to compromise, May could buy Britain more time by requesting an extension of Article 50 from the 27 heads of state in the European Council. But, of course, even if she did, the Council may not approve it. There's always the possibility of leaving with no deal at all. Experts warn that could have catastrophic consequences and British Parliament has indicated it doesn't want that. But it could still happen. So there you have it, the words you need to understand Brexit negotiation. Clear as trickle? <laughs> oh God, okay. I'm Jonathan Capehart, opinion writer for the Washington Post. Real journalism matters, so subscribe to our YouTube channel to follow our latest reporting and analysis.